Preeti. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Supriya. It was always nice to connect with Data Quest. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me for this discussion. Absolutely. Likewise, Preeti. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. So, Preeti, you know, the entrance of Chat GPT in the industry has been sort of a mixed bag, right? On the one hand, people are very excited about the kind of AI revolution that it has resulted in. People want to use it for multiple tasks. On the other hand, uh, you know, there is a lot of concerns regarding the user, usage of chat GPT in the cybersecurity industry. So what are the implications of new age tools like chat GPT on the security industry? Sure. So what I will say, uh, AI revolution is not something new. It has been happening from various years. But the thing is that the public broadcasting of this generative chat GPT kind of a tool is happening in 2023, I will say, or maybe, you know, the end of like 2022. Uh, AI revolution is not happened, you know, overnight. It has like years of study and innovation. And then today we are talking about generative tools, right? Every technology, whether it's a normal technology or a AI driven technology, it has, you know, some has some kind of a benefits are definitely there, but there are some concerns. I won't say there are like the cons, but yeah, there are certain concerns. And if those concerns, you know, taken care properly, these technologies are like the boom for the industry. So let's talk about what are certain booms or what are the certain benefits that these tools are carrying. Chat GPT, you know, we can use to basically increase the efficiency of our cybersecurity staff. Currently, well, you know, especially after uh, COVID, we are facing a lot of, uh, you know, resources, limitations, as well as talent gap. Because after that, the cybersecurity risk has increased like tremendously. And because of that, the resource need is more, but we are unable to fulfill that. So chat GPT can, you know, we can utilize or it can help us to simplify certain labor extensive tasks and can fulfill the skill gap within the team. Chat GPT, in fact, also can, you know, train to identify and mitigate network security threats like the DDoS attacks when used in connection with the other technologies. So these tools are like a super beneficial when it comes to uh, identifying incident related to the cyber attacks, you know, taking action quickly as compared to human, as well as suggesting something, you know, that what we should be doing it. They are pretty faster as compared to human brain. I'll also say it can also help to automate security incident analysis and vulnerability detection, which is likely, you know, a little slow as compared to this technology. If we are using your know, manual or any other technology, I think uh, AIs are uh, more faster uh, than uh, any uh, anyone else. It can also help you to, you know, uh, accurately filter the spam emails. So these are some, I think, the benefits that I'm seeing from the security industry. But at the same time, they have some concerns. And actually, we need you know, to see how we can uh, mitigate those. The first thing is that earlier, we need to, uh, basically, the hacker need to put their brain to write sophisticated emails related to the phishing. But now, by using tools like ChatGPT, they can really draft a very well or a very sophisticated uh, phishing email that can easily track a user through which we can share our personal information or the critical information, right? Secondly, it can also help to generate malicious code uh, for the hacking purpose. So now uh, the hackers earlier, they used to spend so much time to generate their strategies and the malwares uh, to deploy in some organization, but now they can quickly go and just generate the code of the malware and they are ready for the hacking. The third, I think, the thing that I can see is uh, related to, I, uh, these tools also have some existing vulnerabilities. Those may lead to data breaches. Even, you know, uh, one of the research I was reading where uh, cyber criminal was exchanging ideas about how to, you know, create the dark web marketplaces using the chat GPT that sells basically, you know, stolen credentials, malware, or even the drugs exchanges happening in the cryptocurrency. In fact, if employees are using chat GPT, 
you know unintentionally they might be entering the sensitive business information in the chat gpt maybe for analysis maybe for spelling or grammar correction or anything without realizing that all the messages are going to save in open ai servers so really these are the basic concerns i mean as in cyber security industry we need to think of that to how we can mitigate that but what i believe that it is very much important to consider these pros and cons when adopting any new technology um, whether it's a chat gpt or any other technology proper training validation of the input and output of the tool uh, you know complete oversight on the tool you know is very important that that's is the uh, that is only the way to basically mitigate the risk associated with these technologies this is what that i think you know uh, the role of chat gpt in the security industry very pertinent points you mentioned there priti so like we uh, you know started off discussing there are both pros and cons with chat gpt and you know there are uh, of course a lot of benefits and uh, there are concerns about uh, the platform being used by bad elements as well but priti going right. forward it looks like this technology is here to stay generative ai is here to stay so it will be something that is indispensable for companies so how can you've been in the industry for so long now so you're you're a cyber security expert and you've been for over here for over uh, uh, you know a decade so how can cios and cso's help sort of overcome these challenges and what needs to be done really to use this technology in a safer manner i was uh, hearing an example in one of the conference and i really find that example like a very useful in this conversation if uh, you know a cio is the uh, i believe is the accelerator for digital transformation and uh, technical evaluation in any business in any organization then definitely cso is acting like a break to stop the information and cyber security breaches right to uh, ensure the smooth drive of the technology hence it is very much important that cso's and cios they need to work together to come you know to overcome from these uh, security concern or the technology concerns which are uh, playing a vital role in uh, in recent generation what i believe that you know these are certain following uh, uh, i will say the steps or the action that is required to protect ourselves from these kind of a concern the first thing is risk assessment of course if we are not going to conduct the risk assessment we don't know what are the potential vulnerabilities exist in our uh, you know environment regarding deploying of new nest systems so risk assessment is definitely a very much important and ciso cannot conduct the risk assessment alone the support from the cio is required here secondly if these tools are you know supporting the infrastructure then it is very much important that we should be deploying the right set of uh, access control authentication control identity management controls this will help you to provide you know prevent the unauthorized access secondly because if we are internally developing these kind of a tool then having a secure development practices within the organization which ensures that testing of the vulnerabilities before system go live to ensure the system resilience this is also one of the effort that ciso and cios need to put you know to have a proper uh, uh, i will say sdlc uh, software uh, development life cycle uh, framework in place which includes security start from development till the deployment now monitoring and logging is also uh, one of the activity that should be established to detect and respond the security you know incident promptly now strong data privacy measures should be implemented including like encryption safeguard sensitive information and so on beside that nowadays security is uh, i will say changing uh, technology is changing every day the way security is changing and also the hackers are improvising their self like you know every second day that's why it's become very much important for the organization to patch themselves from the security vulnerabilities on a regular basis whenever there is a security patch they need to analyze is whether that patch has an impact on your security posture of the company or not if yes they need to deploy the patch immediately user awareness i think put anything any control any security technology in place but human are always the weakest link then creating user awareness and training program should be you know mandatory they should be educated about the potential risk and the best practices of using such kind of a tool just like the chat gpt or any kind of a you know uh, the new age generative tools 
Beside that, I think uh, it is very crucial to develop a well-defined incident response plan, which not only includes any kind of a data leakage incident, it should also include if you know the data breach happened from the chat GPT kind of a tool, then what is the incident response mechanism, how we should be tackling such kind of an incident. Last but not the least, if we are the company where we are outsourcing our AI services, that point of time, I think it is also become very important to having a thorough due diligence at your vendor, you know, to see how, what are their security practices, how they are securing your data, and what are the contractual obligations that we are putting in place to ensure that our, you know, information, data, whatever we are sharing with the third party is uh, basically secure with them. So this is what that I would like to, you know, say about uh, the role of CISOs and CIOs in, uh, you know, from overcoming from these kind of uh, issues. That was a very comprehensive overview, uh, Preeti. Thank you so much for that. It was truly interesting. So Preeti, you mentioned data security, right? And, you know, uh, there are so many diverse cybersecurity and data uh, protection regulations across the world. So how can multiple, uh, you know, sorry, multinational organizations navigate through these diverse regulations across the world? So, uh, so at present, you know, I will say more than 100 countries, they are already engaged in some or other kind of a data protection bill or the privacy bill, right? The multinational companies actually are dealing with the barrage of upcoming regulations, uh, even related to data privacy, sometimes it's related to data protection. Uh, it's not only like the, uh, you know, the top countries like Europe, UK, US. I think most of the jurisdiction they are across the world, they are coming up with some or other kind of a data privacy. But what is the main problem here? Um, I will say the consistency is the thing because of that internationally, uh, you know, people are uh, dealing with uh, such kind of a issues where data privacy is a concern nowadays. Considering maybe 60 to 70% clause which are there in the privacy or which are there in the cybersecurity similar. But beside that, I think every country has their own laws, regulations. So there is a deviation as well. And I think that is the reason these companies are, uh, you know, navigating from one regulation to another and they need to, you know, have a concrete plan in place to ensure that they are fully meeting these regulations. So what are the certain things that ideally they should be following to ensure that, you know, they will not... Uh, miss anything their company will be fully regulated and they are following any kind of a uh, legal regulatory or any kind of a compliance need so the first thing that what i believe that there should be a compliance team the compliance team it's not only consist of the people from the legal background they should have a people from it security privacy who should have a deep understanding of a global uh, privacy regulation cyber security regulations and you know uh, and whatever the security landscape is changing across the globe so there should be a team that the role of this team is to regularly you know uh, to perform in-depth analysis of cyber security and data protection regulations which is applicable you know as per their organization uh, or you know the country where they are operational then they need to identify the requirements such as data owner data consent data localization whether the cross data transfer is allowed what are the privacy rights and so on and basis which they need to perform certain kind of assessment that what is the impact of those regulation in their company uh, in case if it has an impact, they need to have a proper framework in place to basically meet that, uh, you know, uh, that gap or to fulfill that gap. So that's basically, I will say, a role of a dedicated compliance team who's, who is actually uh, very much dedicated into uh, privacy and the cybersecurity kind of uh, regulations and the uh, upcoming any kind of a law and uh, acts. Now, security. It is very much important to implement security controls which is like very generic but they are applicable in all kind of i will say security standards privacy standards regulations just like encryption tokenizations anonymization to protect the data this is like very general controls but they are very effective to protect the uh, data to protect the uh, you know privacy of the uh, data now they need to implement robust data incident response plan that align with the notification requirement of various jurisdiction so what is that? Every, uh, I will say the regulation, 
they have a clause of reporting the incident within a certain you know a uh, time frame so organization need to build a framework where they should be notifying the individuals regulator authorities or any uh, other uh, you know stakeholder which is going to impact by the incidents so this will help the organization to you know safeguard themselves from any kind of a regulatory penalties so this is also one thing that i you know i think that every organization should be established this policies and framework uh, around the data which is paramount uh, you know they should be defining the policies and procedures that uh, how they are going to handle the data how they are classifying the data what are the controls through which they are ensuring the data protection uh, uh, even in all the layer whether the data is at rest or is in use or you know or it's in the transmission you need to ensure the security of the data one more thing that is i believe personally is like very important that is you know building the culture foster a culture of compliance and ensure that all staff member understand their responsibility in safeguarding the company data whether it's a pii information or non pii information if it's a company data employee should know that how to protect it because it's not only the responsibility of it or the security team every individual in an organization is responsible for protecting the company data this is another thing uh, i would also like to mention that stay updated about the emerging technologies and trends in cyber security and data protection this is also very important they need to assess their potential impact on the organization compliance effort and consider embracing advanced solution to enhance data protection and cyber security measures because as long as they are not going to you know uh, assess where they are what is the you know impact of these new tools and technologies in the organization i think they are not aware that what they need to bring in the company so it's very important first they need to update uh, you know uh, they must be updated with the upcoming technologies and accordingly they should be you know upgrading their tool and technologies to reach up to that level last but not the least yeah. i will say um, uh, that is a uh, third party it is very important for the organization if you are relying on the third party or the vendors implement a robust management program access the data protection and cyber security management practices of vendor that should ensure that there are compliances with the regulation whichever are applicable on you and accordingly you need to basically you know put the uh, clauses in the contract track to address data protection cyber security or any kind of regulatory and uh, you know in fact your compliance requirement which are internally uh, applicable in your industry so this is what that i would like to mention here about this those were again very great insights priti and you rightly mentioned about cyber security not just being the responsibility of you know one team cyber security is extremely pertinent to the entire enterprise so the cyber security culture has to be there so how can cso's cios you know and partners come together to improve agility responsiveness and enhance an organization security posture what i believe uh, basically ceos the board members and the partners they are the business people they understand business gen, uh, you know numbers profit smooth operations but when it comes to security you know they have a ceos and cios so they are not much bother about that that is why i think it is very important for ceos and cios to bridge the gap you know they talk business you talk technical right but how you are going to bridge the business that they should understand the security well so first of all i think ceos and cios need to bridge this gap and make things very simpler for them so that they can understand security as a business need that's the first thing secondly i would like to say that they should help leadership become the cyber security risk aware help them to connect the dot between the cyber security and its potential impact on the business i think then only ceo uh, ceos is going uh, ceos uh, will will be looking at the you know uh, security and uh, they will be <laughs> basically giving you fund to implement something new over there the second thing i will say security or tech leader should present it and security plan in terms of risk cost and its business impact if the three things are not talking to each other i think uh, it, it is very difficult for the technical people to make ceos and the board member understand the importance of security 
CEOs and CISOs, uh, CISOs and CIOs can also partner with CEOs and the board members to improve agility. I will say the responsiveness and enhance an organization security postures by fostering a security conscious culture throughout the organization. That means I think they should be uh, arranging some kind of a trainings. A uh, training should be like the designation driven. It should from the top to bottom. And once the conscious culture of security will build from top from the bottom, the secure the CISOs and CIOs vision automatically will be you know start fulfilling. CISOs and CIOs also need to align security initiative with the business strategy or the objective. I think that is uh, one thing that which is very important that before uh, uh, developing the uh, uh, technology and the security strategy for the company, uh, they need to uh, understand that what is the business objective, what is what business wants to achieve in this respective year, and their technology should be you know uh, aligned to that. Suppose if business wants to go digital or the digital transformation is my objective for 2023. We should be proposing the plan which is going to help the business in meeting the digitalization, which includes security, of course, your digital innovations and how your innovation is going to, you know, uh, give the return on that. So such kind of a strategy driven uh, security and the technical uh, uh, strategies to be built to build uh, to you know work very closely with the ceos and the board members they should also provide insight into the potential threat and the vulnerabilities and work together to set security postures uh, and the governance framework across the organization i think these are the very small things but yes these are impactful if we as a ceos and cios work in this direction definitely it will help ceos and cios to uh, consider technology and security uh, as equal uh, as the other initiatives is happening to grow the business. Thank you so much, uh, Preeti, for the thorough insight into the cybersecurity field, right? I mean, we all, we as journalists, we often hear about breaches and things like that. Today, we find out about the kind of thought process that goes into preventing these breaches from happening. And you guys are doing right. heroes, you know, in doing this every single day. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you, as always. Thank you so much. Looking forward to keep in touch with you in future as well. Thank you. Thank you, Supriya, for your time. It was Thank nice you. talking to you. Absolutely. Thank the you. pleasure was mine.